Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today is the first of what will be several CES related videos over the coming weeks. We aren't actually at CES ourselves as you well, I guess might be able to tell, but throughout the week, we'll be giving you guys some opinions and updates on what's been happening at the show. And that starts today with AMD's first announcement, second generation Ryzen Mobile. So the first important point to note about second generation Ryzen Mobile is these are not seven nanometer parts. AMD is set to talk more about seven nanometers at their keynote for other product lines, but these new mobile processors are built on 12 nanometers using the existing Zen Plus architecture. They also carry Ryzen Mobile 3000 series branding as expected. This may be a little confusing considering third generation Ryzen desktop parts are expected to form the rest of the Ryzen 3000 series and should be built using seven nanometers, but it does fit in with AMD's existing product lines. The Ryzen Mobile 2000 series, for example, debuted a head of second generation Ryzen, but still used the original Zen architecture on 14 nanometers. Ryzen Mobile 3000 is a natural successor, bumping their lineup to 12 nanometers and Zen Plus around 15 months after first gen Ryzen Mobile. You'd think that if AMD is launching 12 nanometer Ryzen Mobile parts now that mobile APUs based on Zen 2 are still some time away, which again fits with AMD's recent launch cycles that see mobile parts released well after their desktop counterparts. In any case, let's talk about the second gen Ryzen Mobile lineup. Because these are Zen Plus CPUs on 12 nanometers, this isn't a major upgrade over the first generation. For the most part, we're looking at 100 megahertz increases to the base clock and between 100 and 200 megahertz increases to the boost clock for the CPU cores, facilitated by the minor bump from 14 nanometers to 12 nanometers. There are four 15 watt U-series SKUs in the lineup. At the top end, we have the Ryzen 7 3700U as a four core, eight thread part clocked up to four gigahertz. That's really the biggest upgrade to clock speeds here. Previously, the 2700U topped out at 3.8 gigahertz, but its successor can hit 4.0 gigahertz. We're also seeing an extra 100 megahertz added to the clock speed of the Vega 10 GPU. Now it hits 1400 megahertz up from 1300 megahertz across 10 compute units. While cache is listed here as six megabytes of L2 and L3, it seems the split of two megabytes L2 and four megabytes L3 remains the same as first generation. Then we have the Ryzen 5 3500U, again, four cores with SMT, slightly lower clock speeds on the CPU compared to the 3700U, and it has Vega 8 graphics at 1200 megahertz, also 100 megahertz higher than its predecessor. The Ryzen 3 3300U comes in with a lower boost clock on the CPU, and the GPU is cut down to Vega 6 with six compute units Again, this is all very similar to the first gen lineup, but with slightly higher clock speeds. The Ryzen 3 3200U comes in as a two core, four thread part with Vega 3 graphics, again, with clock speed improvements over the 2200U. There are some new parts in the lineup though. In particular, we have two 35 watt H series CPUs designed for gaming notebooks. This is an area AMD says they want to get into more and are going to be pursuing more opportunities with across 2019. First gen Ryzen Mobile did eventually get 35 watt H series SKUs, but they weren't really seen in any laptops. It sounds like that will change with second gen. Looking at AMD's table, there is no difference to the specifications between the 35 watt and 15 watt parts, except the TDP. So the Ryzen 7 3750H, for example, has the same core configuration, clock speeds, and GPU as the Ryzen 7 3700U. However, with that higher 35 watt TDP, the 3750H will be able to sustain much higher CPU and GPU clocks for a longer time. It is a little unusual that base clocks have dropped from the mid 3.0 gigahertz range down to 2.3 gigahertz and 2.1 gigahertz, but I suspect the higher TDP will still allow sustained clocks above the 3.3 and 3.2 gigahertz base clocks of the previous generation for CPU workloads. With second gen Ryzen Mobile, AMD's H-series processors still have the challenge of going up against Intel's 45 watt H-series offerings, which are currently six core 12 thread parts with similar clock speeds. The quad core Ryzen 7 3750H will end up more closely matched to something like Intel's Core i5-8300H, which is commonly found in more budget focused gaming systems. The ASUS system AMD showed off that uses the Ryzen 7 3750H and Ryzen 5 3550H seems to be one of these budget focused machines as it packs a Radeon RX 560X GPU and has fairly typical entry level gaming dimensions. I think we'll see the H series used in similar designs across 2019. 
AMD has also introduced an entry-level Athlon APU into their Ryzen mobile lineup for the first time. It's the Athlon 300U. This is a very similar APU to the Ryzen 3 3200U in that it has two cores, four threads, and three Vega compute units, but everything is clocked lower and it's still built using 14 nanometers. AMD says this chip is designed for the entry-level Windows and Chromebook market, where Ryzen 3 wasn't really competing as well, so expect dirt cheap prices for that APU. That's basically the second gen Ryzen Mobile lineup, nothing spectacular, it's just a small clock speed increase that will carry AMD through to 7 nanometer parts in probably 12 months or so. This release is very similar to Intel's Whiskey Lake U series in that we're only getting small increases over the last generation. And indeed, lots of AMD's materials for this launch were focused on comparing second gen Ryzen to much older laptops, which is a typical upgrade path for buyers. They did give a few vague performance metrics for some Ryzen Mobile 3000 series parts. You can see here a few comparisons between the Ryzen 5 3500U and the Core i5-8250U. Then in the next slide, we have some gaming data for the Ryzen 7 3700U's integrated graphics up against Intel's Core i7-8565U, which is their latest 15 watt Whiskey Lake CPU. As expected, you know, in both slides, AMD's product looks pretty good. Perhaps the bigger announcement out of today is that proper Ryzen mobile drivers will be available starting Q1 2019 for both first and second generation Ryzen mobile APUs. AMD specifically said in their presentation that when a new graphics driver comes out for discrete Radeon GPUs, that driver will also support all Ryzen mobile products past and present. Users will be able to download and install this generic driver on any system that uses those products. This is something we revealed would happen a couple of months ago now, and as expected, it's been announced alongside new Ryzen mobile products. AMD didn't specifically say if these drivers would be available through AMD.com, but you think that would be the case, especially as they are claiming to deliver day zero optimizations for games and so on. This is a really big deal because the key issue with Ryzen mobile products in the past has been driver support. The driver's OEMs were shipping and using were outdated and buggy. Often users would hack desktop or APU drivers to work on their Ryzen mobile laptops and be treated to much better performance and stability. That shouldn't be a problem going forward because AMD has listened to the community and finally gotten their act together on this and will be providing their own generic drivers for all Ryzen mobile products, and that's great news. A few loose ends to finish this one out. AMD is expecting 33% more design wins for Ryzen mobile in 2019, so that's a modest improvement considering there are only a few laptops on the market that use AMD's mobile processors at the moment. Still, progress is progress, and at least AMD actually has something competitive to attract OEMs. AMD also announced the A6 9220C and A4 9120C as processors designed specifically for Chromebooks. These processors compete with Intel's low-end Atom chips like the Celeron N4200. These are based on AMD's older APU designs on 28 nanometers, so nothing amazing, but they do pack two cores and two threads at decent enough clock speeds in a six watt power envelope. These will be seen in Chromebooks from HP and Acer to begin with. That's it for today's announcements. Of course, we are expecting more stuff to be unveiled at AMD's keynote address at CES in a few days. We're not expecting AMD to announce Ryzen 3000 series CPUs or any Navi GPUs at the show, but we do expect some roadmap updates and teasers for both. We are expecting, however, plenty of discussion around 7 nanometers as well as AMD's data center and mobile products. There's also a chance AMD will announce a consumer 7 nanometer Vega 2 GPU, so we'll have to wait and see what's in store. As always, you can subscribe to Hardware Unbox for more updates throughout CES, along with our thoughts on the biggest announcements. You can support us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat and monthly live streams, and I'll catch you in the next one.